recognize himself. Mr. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you, you, you know what the number is, don't you? Number that Mr. Gates was trying to get an answer, get a response from. You know what that number is, right? Congressman, I would be pleased to provide this committee, you, Mr. No, no, Chairman. You, 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 uh, know, you don't know now? You don't know what that is? I mean, again, just to, just to read, because what Mr. Gates was trying to get at, I think what the country would like to know is we know that there's been an influx of people coming in. Two, over 2 million encounters on our southern border, inadmissible uh, aliens on our southern border. We know that's, that number has come in since Joe Biden's been president. We know it's a big number. And all he was asking was how many of that 2 point something million, over 2 million, how many have went through the adjudication process and actually been removed? Mr. Chairman. And you're telling, you're telling the, the Judiciary Committee today you don't know what that number is? Mr. Chairman. What I am sharing with you is that we will provide you with whatever data you request. No, no, that's not where I, I want to go right. But it's a simple. We, we've had kind of two simple questions that you didn't give an answer to. And I just want to know, if, give you a, a second chance here if you'll do it. What is that number out of that two point something universe of inadmissible aliens encountered on our southern border who've come into the country, been released into the country? How many have went through the adjudication process and then been removed? Mr. Chairman, I'd be pleased to provide you with that. Can you guess? Mr. Chairman, it is. Can you right. give an estimate? Mr. Chairman, I will not. Why, why will you not give an estimate to the American people? Because they would like to know, because that sort of frames it. Here's what's come in. Here's who you've allowed in since Joe Biden's been president. And here's the ones who've actually been removed. I would say two things, Mr. Chairman. Number one, I will provide that data to you. We will do so. Well, you're not real good at that because no. you've said that other times here and you don't give us the data. I mean, we asked information about about the uh, the Disinformation Governance Board and all we get is redacted documents. So you're not real good about that. And it's a simple question and, frankly, a question we ask you to be prepared for. We wrote you two letters in the last several weeks to be prepared to answer that kind of question. I think probably that specific question, and you won't give us an answer. Mr. And so Chairman. the fact that you won't is bad, and the fact that you don't know is just as bad, because it's, it's the one question the country kind of would like to know. What's really happening? When you say all these you know, pathways and things and your border secure and all the things you say, we kind of like to know what's really happened with the two point something million people who've been released into the country since Joe Biden's been president. How many have went through the adjudication process and been removed? So now simple, I have, simple question. So now I have three points. One, we will provide the data to you. God bless Two, you. We we've have been, been we've been waiting. But God bless. I hope you do it this time. Two, we have been cooperating with this committee. We have made countless documents and people available to you. We have provided briefings. Yeah. And here's what those, by the way, just so you know, I'll let you finish with your third point. Here's what those documents look like. Here's the one you sent to us on when you formed. It's a policy and responsibilities in the department's information manipulation mission. That sounds scary enough. Information manipulation mission. And it's all redacted. And this is, this is the kind of stuff you gave us when we were trying to figure out who was in, responsible for putting together the disinformation governance board that I think my colleague, Mr. Johnson, was asking. And now we're asking a simple question about a number. And the fact that you won't give it to us or don't know it is, I think, a concern for all of us. I would say both sides, because the Democrats probably want to know, too. They probably, that, that's, that's something that should be so obvious and you won't communicate. To. Make your third point. M Mr. Chairman, we'll provide that information to every, every member. Will of it be like this or will it be a real number? Will it be like that? The third, will it be a real number? Mr. Chairman, the third point I L would Let make. me ask you real quick. Can you get that number to us like tomorrow? Or has it got, you got to go back and is it going to take weeks and months and haggling back and forth on all the letters we do? Congress writes letters to agencies and we haggle back and forth all that, that dance we have to do. Or can you just get us the number? Mr. Chairman, we'll provide that data to you as promptly as possible. My third point would be the most fundamental point of all when we speak of immigration. We are dealing with a fundamentally broken system. We have between 11 and 12 okay. million. I, I, got, I got 50 seconds. So I appreciate that. You, you've said that before, so I got that point. Don't mean to cut you off, but I got to get this. Now, in your testimony, you said you've arrested 14,000 smugglers. Seems like a big number to me. What happened to those guys? Those individuals, Mr. Chairman, uh, are, if the evidence so supports, prosecuted for smuggling. You've referred them to DOJ. You've, turned, you've arrested them. You've given them over to DOJ. What's happened to them? Have they been, have they been indicted, taken to trial, found guilty? Are they in prison somewhere? What's, what's the status? L and that is a huge number, 14,000 smugglers. I mean, God bless you for getting them, but I'd like to know what happened to them. 
I'm very, very pleased to provide that data to you. Let me provide well, some examples. You just told us a couple, a couple minutes ago you work closely with the FBI. We'd like that information, too. Uh, that's, that's important. Have you arrested any of them multiple times? Congressman, I'll provide that information for you. You think that's a possibility, some of those smugglers you've arrested more than once? Oh, Congressman, when I prosecuted immigration crimes in the 1990s, we saw individuals who had repeated violations uh, of criminal laws of the United States and repeated removals from the United States. You think I think prosecuted a, my time has expired. But you think a smuggler, title. you catch a, someone smuggling people, smuggling drugs, you wouldn't, that guy would be prosecuted and you'd think you would, again, know that answer too, but Mr. we Chairman. hope you get those answers to us. I yield now uh, to... Unanimous consent request, okay. Mr. Chairman. General ladies from Washington is recognized for UC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to uh, ask unanimous consent to enter into the record a New York Times article called Burning Cell Towers Out of Baseless Fear they spread the virus. This is a conspiracy theory linking the spread of the coronavirus to 5G wireless technology that spurred more than 100 incidents in just one month. Objection. The chair Thank now you, Mr. Chairman. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Secretary. Welcome. Thank you for your good job. I really believe you have a thankless job, but you've done a hell of a job. When I became ranking member of the Homeland Security Border Subcommittee, I made it my priority to visit every major port of entry on the southern border. I visited, met with men and women in uniform, both blue and green uniforms. I wanted to see what their job was about, what the challenges were. But Mr. Secretary, let's talk refugees. COVID-19 has changed the world. Today, we're probably seeing the biggest movement of refugees in recent history, if not in the history of the world. Title 42, when Title 42 was about to be lifted, everybody was expecting total chaos at the border. A week before that, a few days before that event, I went to San Isidro, myself and the border port director, visited Mexico. We met with Mexican officials, federal, state, local, as well as Mexican stakeholders interested in making sure everything went well at the border. Can I see that Everybody expected chaos. Title 42 was lifted. No chaos. Everything went unexpectedly well. I think you were the architect of that policy. Carrot and sticks. You made sure that people had a pathway, had incentives to come legally, and he also put criminal sanctions on those that would break those laws. And of course, you also worked with some of our partners south of the border to make sure that this job was not just the United States, but that the burden was shared with other people like Mexico, Colombia, and other nations around the world. Mr. Mayorkas, you're doing a good job. So my question to you today is, how can we, U.S. Congress, assist you in doing a better job for the United States? Congressman, uh, thank you. We are taking the actions that we think will strengthen the security of our border, uh, uphold our values as well, uh, to the best of our abilities, operating within a broken immigration system. The most fundamental um, benefit that we could um, receive from Congress is legislative reform. You know, I'd like to see us move to an immigration reform. You were trying to say earlier, we have 12 million undocumented workers working in this country, some having been here for 10, 20, 30 years. No hope of an adjustment of status. We have another 10 million job openings in this country today. Let's quickly, in my last minute or two, talk about fentanyl. It's ruining Main Street back home. Deaths. 80 to 90 percent of the fentanyl comes through our ports of entries. Yet right now, you only have enough funding to maybe inspect 2 percent of the vehicles coming through our ports of entry. Does that sound about right? Congressman, we have uh, harnessed advanced technology, most notably the non-intrusive inspection technology, uh, to be a force multiplier for our personnel. 
we, we rely on funding from Congress for not only that technology, but also the personnel who operate it, the, the extraordinary people of U.S. Customs and Border Protection, both our Border Patrol agents and our Office of Field Operations personnel, and So, Mr. Marine. Secretary, if we wanted to stop more fentanyl from coming into the country, I'd say you need more personnel, more technology, more of those drug-sniffing dogs that are so effective. You need more funding. We want to go from 2% of inspections to 4 to 6 to 10% of those vehicles being inspected. You need the funds. We, we do, Congressman, and it, it is a two-part challenge. It is addressing the supply, uh, which uh, your question is uh, focused on, of course, and we also have to address the issue of demand in this country. The, the scourge of drugs has been a long, enduring one, I will say. I, I prosecuted many um, narcotics trafficking cases in my time as a prosecutor. The toxicity um, of fentanyl is something I have never seen before. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for your good work. We want to